Did you know that the vitamins sitting in your medicine cabinet right now might be doing more harm than good? Here's something that surprised researchers at Cleveland Clinic when they reviewed health records from thousands of seniors. Adults over 60 taking certain vitamin supplements were found in some studies to have more health problems than those who weren't taking anything at all. Experts note that supplement-related complications in seniors are not uncommon, especially with unnecessary or high-dose use. One vitamin commonly found in multivitamins was linked in a major clinical trial to a 17% increase in cancer risk. Before we begin, tell us in the comments now your age and where you're watching us from. We're reading and replying to every single comment. Number five, high dose vitamin B complex. Let's start with B vitamins, which have a reputation for being harmless. They're water soluble. So your body should flush out what it doesn't need, right? Recent research tells a different story for people over 60. The Cleveland Clinic published findings showing that older adults taking high-dose B-complex supplements, particularly those containing large amounts of niacin and folate, may be putting strain on their liver. After 60, your liver's filtering system naturally slows down. Taking a B-complex pill that combines multiple B vitamins in high doses can overwhelm your system. A case study in the medical journal BMJ reported a previously healthy man who developed acute hepatitis from energy drinks packed with excessive niacin. His liver couldn't process the overload. While this was extreme, it highlights that your liver has limits that become more pronounced with age. The National Institutes of Health reports that vitamin B12 deficiency becomes more common after 60, largely because we produce less stomach acid as we age. Some heartburn medications further suppress stomach acid. So B12 supplementation can be helpful, but the key is targeted supplementation. Taking B12 alone at 2.4 micrograms daily is generally considered safe. The problem starts with B-complex formulas containing high doses of other B vitamins your body doesn't need. According to Harvard Medical School, when niacin and folate accumulate, they can place additional stress on your liver's detoxification pathways. What should you do? If your doctor has confirmed B12 deficiency through blood tests, Ask about taking B12 alone rather than a complex formula. Always check with your healthcare provider because they can review your medications to determine if supplementation is necessary. Number four, excess vitamin A. Moving to vitamin A, the relationship between this vitamin and bone health in seniors is more complicated than most realize. Vitamin A is essential for vision, immune function, and cell growth. But when it comes to supplements containing preformed vitamin A, more is not better. Research from the Linus Pauling Institute at Oregon State University shows that vitamin A toxicity may occur at lower doses in seniors compared to younger adults. Observational studies have found links between intakes of preformed vitamin A exceeding 1,500 micrograms RAE, about 5,000 international units per day, and increased risk of hip fractures in older people. Many multivitamins contain between 2,000, 500, and 5,000 international units of preformed vitamin A, labeled as vitamin A acetate or palmitate. If you're taking a daily multivitamin with this amount, you might be getting more than is safe for your bones. Excessive vitamin A has been associated with increased activity of cells that break down bone, potentially outpacing new bone formation. After 60, your bones already deal with age-related changes. Women experience accelerated bone loss after menopause. Men also lose bone density with age. Hip fractures are especially serious in older adults, often leading to reduced mobility and loss of independence. We're talking specifically about preformed vitamin A from supplements, not vitamin A from food or beta carotene, which your body converts as needed. Foods rich in beta carotene, like carrots and sweet potatoes, don't carry the same risks. The Linus Pauling Institute recommends taking a multivitamin providing no more than 2,500 international units of preformed vitamin A. Check your supplement labels. If it's providing 5,000 international units of vitamin A acetate or palmitate, discuss alternatives with your doctor, especially if you're at risk for osteoporosis. Number three, iron supplements without deficiency. Iron might be the most misunderstood supplement. Many seniors assume that because anemia becomes more common with age, taking iron is preventive. But taking iron when you don't need it can lead to serious problems. In healthy men and postmenopausal women, 
Iron deficiency is rare. If you're iron deficient, that's a red flag deserving medical investigation. There might be underlying causes like internal bleeding. According to the Iron Disorders Institute, older people generally aren't prone to accumulating excess iron from balanced diets, but they can reach toxic levels with unnecessary supplements. Even small amounts of excess iron can catalyze oxidative stress when mixed with other risk factors common in seniors like obesity, diabetes history, or inadequate fruit and vegetable consumption. Research has found associations between excess iron and adverse effects. Some studies suggest links to increased mortality. Iron is a pro-oxidant, meaning it can contribute to free radical formation that may damage cells. The Framingham Heart Study found most seniors eating typical American diets had iron levels above normal. Yet research shows about 10% of adults over 65 are anemic, rising to 20% over 85. This creates confusion. Some seniors have too much iron, others too little. That's why taking iron without confirmed deficiency is problematic. Large amounts of iron can cause inflammation of the stomach lining, ulcers, constipation, nausea, and decreased zinc absorption. For seniors with digestive issues or multiple medications, unnecessary iron makes things worse. Don't take iron unless your doctor confirms deficiency through blood tests. If you need supplementation, research from the American Journal of Medicine found that low-dose iron therapy, as little as 15 milligrams daily, can be effective with fewer side effects than conventional higher doses of 150 milligrams or more. If concerned about iron levels, ask your doctor for a complete blood count and ferritin test. These simple tests show whether you actually need supplementation. Before we continue, if you're finding this helpful, hit that like button so more seniors can see this message. Subscribe to Mastering Your Health for daily science-backed health information designed for people over 60. Number two, vitamin E supplements. At number two, we have vitamin E with warnings every senior needs to hear. For years, vitamin E was touted as a powerful antioxidant that might prevent cancer, heart disease, and Alzheimer's. But large clinical trials told a different story. The most important study is the selenium and vitamin E cancer prevention trial, known as SELECT. This was one of the largest cancer prevention trials ever conducted, involving over 35,000 healthy men aged 50 and older from 427 study sites. The trial began in 2001 with high hopes. Earlier studies suggested vitamin E might protect against prostate cancer. Men were randomly assigned to take 400 international units of vitamin E daily, selenium, both, or placebo pills. The trial was supposed to run until 2011, but stopped three years early in 2008. Vitamin E was failing to prevent cancer, and there were warning signs of harm. Updated results in the Journal of the American Medical Association showed men taking vitamin E alone had a 17% increased risk of prostate cancer compared to placebo. Additional analyses from Harvard Medical School and Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center were more concerning. In men starting with low selenium levels, taking vitamin E alone raised high-grade prostate cancer risk by 63%. These are real increases in cancer diagnoses in healthy men who thought they were helping their health. Research published in scientific reports provided insight. When researchers exposed cells to vitamin E, it upregulated enzymes that activate carcinogens, creating conditions that might make the prostate more susceptible to cancer-causing substances. The vitamin also generated oxidative stress and promoted DNA damage in studies. This is about vitamin E supplements, not getting vitamin E from food. Foods rich in vitamin E, like nuts, seeds, and vegetable oils, don't carry these risks. Amounts in food are much smaller and come with other nutrients that work together. Experts at Harvard Medical School and MD Anderson Cancer Center are now clear. Doctor, Mark Garnick at Harvard states he counsels patients to avoid dietary supplements containing vitamin E, including multivitamins, unless there's a specific diagnosed deficiency. Check your supplement labels. If you're taking standalone vitamin E at 400 international units or higher, discuss stopping with your doctor. Focus on getting vitamin E from food sources. Almonds, sunflower seeds, spinach, and avocados provide vitamin E safely with other beneficial nutrients. Number one, excessive vitamin D without monitoring. 
We've reached number one, and this affects millions trying to support their health. Vitamin D supplementation is widely recommended for bone health, immune function, and overall wellness. But high dose vitamin D without proper monitoring can cause serious complications, especially in seniors. Clinical reports have documented vitamin D toxicity in older adults taking excessive amounts. A study from a North India hospital found that among elderly patients presenting with altered mental status and hypercalcemia, a small percentage had vitamin D toxicity as the underlying cause. These patients had taken cumulative vitamin D doses, averaging over 2.5 million international units, with blood levels reaching toxic ranges. The most common presenting symptom was altered mental state, with 85% experiencing confusion or lethargy. This is particularly concerning in seniors who may already have cognitive vulnerabilities. Vitamin D toxicity leads to hypercalcemia, excessively high blood calcium levels. According to Cleveland Clinic, symptoms include vomiting, increased thirst, frequent urination, constipation, confusion, and muscle weakness. Severe cases can cause kidney stones, abnormal heart rhythms, kidney failure, and confusion. Research from the Endocrine Society shows that vitamin D has a long half-life because it's stored in fat tissue. This means if you take too much, it can take months for levels to normalize, with hypercalcemia persisting during that time. A study examining vitamin D and calcium supplementation in older women found that hypercalcemia occurred in nearly 9% of participants, while hypercalciuria, excessive calcium in urine, occurred in over 30%. These episodes can contribute to kidney stone formation and kidney damage. The tolerable upper limit for vitamin D is 4,000 international units daily for adults. However, some seniors take much higher doses, particularly when buying over-the-counter supplements without medical supervision. Research has documented cases where manufacturing errors led to supplements containing much higher doses, causing severe toxicity. A study from Switzerland found that seniors given 60,000 international units of vitamin D monthly had higher rates of falls and fractures compared to those getting lower doses. Blood levels reached concerning ranges even at what seemed like monthly dosing. What's critical to understand is that vitamin D supplementation should be based on testing not assumptions. The National Institute on Aging recommends that if you're considering vitamin D supplementation, work with your healthcare provider to test your levels first. Most people need between 600 and 800 international units daily, which can often be obtained through a combination of sensible sun exposure, vitamin D rich foods like fatty fish and fortified dairy, and modest supplementation if needed. Mega doses of 5,000 to 10,000 international units daily should only be taken under medical supervision with periodic blood testing. If you're currently taking high dose vitamin D, don't stop abruptly, but schedule an appointment with your doctor to have your levels checked and adjust your dose appropriately. Signs you might have excessive vitamin D include persistent nausea, increased thirst, frequent urination, or confusion. So there you have it five vitamins that may be doing more harm than good for people over 60. Number five was high dose B complex vitamins that may stress your liver. Number four was excess vitamin A linked to increased fracture risk. Number three was iron supplements without confirmed deficiency. Number two was vitamin E with increased prostate cancer risk. And number one was excessive vitamin D causing hypercalcemia. The message isn't that all supplements are bad, it's that after 60, your body processes nutrients differently. Your liver and kidneys don't work as efficiently. You're likely taking medications that interact with supplements. And you're at higher risk for conditions that supplements might worsen. Work with your healthcare provider. Get tested to identify actual deficiencies before starting supplements. When supplementation is necessary, use targeted, appropriate doses. Focus on getting nutrients from food whenever possible. And remember that no supplement replaces the fundamentals of good health, including balanced diet, regular activity, quality sleep, and stress management. Have you experienced unexpected side effects from supplements? What are you currently taking? And have your levels been tested? Share your experiences in the comments below. Your story might help another senior make better decisions. 
If you found this valuable, hit that like button and subscribe to Mastering Your Health for more science-based information. Thanks for watching.